Hey y'all, it's Steve, Hobo with Wood. In this video, I'm going to go over something that I said I was going to go over in one of the lives and just got squirreled and ran out of time. But we're going to show you how to set up the geometry to put together a piece like this where they're interlocking with each other and we got the little shelf in here for the egg to sit on. Getting all the alignments set up properly, just the, the entire layout. I'm going to show you how to do that in Lightburn. Hang around. Okay, so we're going to look at this little Easter egg file. This was a single egg file design. It was actually the prototype for the big one in the rear, but I was making it to scale to see how the fitment was going to work, knowing that I could always blow it up and then add as many tiers as I needed to make the eggs platforms. But when I first assembled the first prototype, I was like, hey, that's kind of cute, and that might serve as a single egg holder, and that's where that came from. So I went ahead and started setting up all the geometry for it to get all the proper placements for the platform, uh, the height of the, the feet, and then the uh, alternate eggs there for it to sit level and not be cattywampus. And that's what we're gonna look at. And to save a little bit of time in my designs, I've told you guys, I will go to one of my favorite websites and I always invert it but it is svgheart.com, svgheart.com. So let's jump over there. This is the homepage. I'm logged into my account. And svgheart.com is a great resource for finding some artwork, but I will use it just to find pieces that I need to build my artwork. So I want some bunny ears. Uh, if I type in bunny, ears and search it's gonna rock and roll and throw up a bunch of different possibilities and uh, these are the ones that I, I liked I'm gonna right click on that or left click it select it and now I can download them and, and since I do have a premium membership it doesn't cost me anything they do have some free SVG files that you do not have to have the premium membership for, but I do. But instead of downloading it, I'm just gonna right click, right click, copy image, go over to Lightburn, right click and paste. Select that image, right click and trace. And that looks good enough. And I'm going to delete the original image after trace, say OK. Put that on the black layer and ungroup it. Select it all, set it over here to the side. There are my bunny feet and my bunny ears. Now I need an egg. Now the egg is one of the most difficult items to draw in light burn. You start out with your ellipse tool, your circle tool. You hold your shift key and you draw out a perfect circle. Put it on a line path. Right click it. I got to go in the selector tool. Right click it. Convert to a path. Show the nodes. Select that top node. And begin to just draw that up until you get an egg shape. And your average egg is about two and a half inches tall. So lock your aspect ratios and make the height two and a half inches. And that looks pretty good. I'm actually going to go back to note editing. I'll make that a little bit blunter, about like that. And now I'll go back to two and a half inches. There we go. Now, that was very difficult. Now I've got that, I'm gonna put it on a tool path because that is the actual egg itself and now I need to build my shape around that piece and let's do an offset an outward offset and let's do it with a um, let's say uh, 20 millimeters uh, 
got to go millimeters. Offset. 20 millimeters. And now I need another offset. And I'm going to make this out of 3 millimeter wood. So I'm actually going to make this offset 3 millimeters. That way I'm 3 millimeters ac across here. And I'm also 3 millimeters wide. So it's about square shaped. Uh, in, in its profile, a cross section. All right, and I'm gonna select both of those, put them on a cut path, and there's the beginning of my first piece. Now, uh, let's select my bunny ears, bring them over here, and they are ungrouped, so I'm gonna select just this one and group it. Select everything in this one and group it. Now I'm going to bring them down here and position them where I want. And I think about there, I think. Hold my shift button, select both of them and do an offset. And I want to do probably uh, one and a half millimeters. Select the original object or select the resulting objects. Do not delete the original objects. Do a round offset outward and say OK. Now since it's I told it to select that, I can put it on the cut path. They are grouped. I'm going to group both of these, hold my shift key and select my group of offsets of my ears. I'm going to look and make sure that they're not in past the innermost piece. They're not. And now just hit weld. Now those bunny ears are in place and welded where they need to be. Now I'll grab my bunny feet, my little bunny bunny feet, bring them over here and I'm going to do the same thing. Those don't need to be moved, but I am going to uh, make sure, see, ungroup them. I'm going to group each individual foot. Well, they didn't ungroup. Ungroup and group individual feet. Now that I've got those grouped, I'm going to select them both and align them to the bottom of each other. That makes sure that they're properly aligned because that's important because that's actually going to be two of the four feet that's going to be having this stand up nice and square. So if they were not level with each other, that would be a problem. So now, depending on how high you place these in here, it's going to affect where you put your shelf. Now, when I designed it originally, I had both of these up in here pretty good uh yeah about like that and it works uh, but the higher we go up in there the higher we have to put that platform in order for the egg to sit on it and clear the feet uh because your your the hole that you put in that platform for your egg to sit in is going to allow a certain amount of that egg to drop through so, uh, and this was a little bit of trial and error. That's why I cut the first one and uh, then uh, cut the next one with the first platform and it didn't work. It was too, uh, the feet were too high or the platform was too low. So to play it safe this time, when I'm, if I'm gonna redesign it, I might put it uh, about there, a little lower. Those I will group. Now I will do an offset of the same way I did on the ears, one and a half millimeters outward round. Select the resulting objects. Do not delete the original objects. Say OK. The, uh, we were selected the resulting objects and now we got to do is put it on a cut path. They're already grouped. Hold my shift button. These are already grouped and now I can just weld them. And now the feet and the ears are welded together and there's the first layer of the little uh, Peter Cottontail. Now, this is where you start having fun. Where do you place the shelf for that to sit on? 
And how do you make the notches for this to snap into? Well, we know we're working with three millimeter wood. So I'm going to draw out what will be a toolpath. Put it on a toolpath. Tell it to be, well, it is three millimeters. And then I'm going to come over here and tell it to go to the center of this toolpath because these were all offsets of that original piece. So that's all centered. I'm going to take this and I'm going to hold my control button. And by grabbing that middle piece there, I can drag it and stretch it out in both directions. That way now I'm wider than the actual egg. Now I'm just bringing this down and placing it where I think I might need it or want it. And, um, you know, I'm, I'm working with uh, little plastic eggs and I've got eggs here that I can measure and say, okay, well at this point it's so many millimeters across and if I uh, mount it there, then I can see how much of this egg is gonna be sticking out the bottom and I'm going to do a rough measurement of just that. Taking uh, one of the plastic eggs out of the bunny rabbit. Well, actually, uh, I kind of need it in there so I can see. Yeah, that one's the one that works. And it's uh, maybe 10 millimeters up from the bottom, give or take. Maybe. So yeah, if uh, so that distance there really doesn't matter so much, not yet. It will when we go to cut it, but eyeballing that. And now this is something I've got one here, so I can I can tell. Uh, initially building it, I didn't have it, but it looks like the bottom of my platform is about uh, six to eight millimeters above the feet, probably closer to eight above the feet. But these feet are placed higher up in this egg than the feet I just did. So, and this is why, why you prototype. And this is why I charge what I charge for my files. I don't just throw these things together and then put the files up for sale. Every file that I design is built step by step. Here's one first step making sure that the inter actual interlocking all work. Second step, putting the uh, platform in there uh, and then scaling it up, putting the second platform in there. You know, I got a lot of time and research and development going into these files. Okay, so, and I got to think about it, regardless where those feet are positioned in the egg, uh, the amount of clearance required, is gonna be pretty much the same. So let's jump back into Lightburn and I've got that toolpath there. Now this three millimeter bar represents the actual round disc that's gonna sit in here. But when we're looking at it from the profile, all we see is that three millimeters and that's all that we need to have here to draw this tool out. So I'm gonna arrow this down and get it right on top of the feet. And that's close enough and I'm gonna have my gear movement uh, arrow, uh, set to 10 millimeters and say okay and I'm just going to air that up one time that's up 10 millimeters so that is the height of the egg platform and that's going to be close to how far the egg sits down in there the egg may sit down a little bit further but that'll give me plenty of room uh, around the egg it's pretty centered in the egg the the bunny that's going to look pretty decent now, the one thing that I, I could have done, should have done, is made a second copy of the the bunny, the, the outline, uh, off of the initial toolpath because that's going to be the other axis of the egg, and I didn't do that, but it's simple enough because I remembered it was off this toolpath. I'll do an offset of 20 millimeters. Say okay, I'm gonna put it on the red toolpath and then do an offset of that one of three millimeters. Say okay. Now using my cuts and layers, holding my shift button and select everything on the T1 path, I can just come over here, move it over here out of the way and there is my other egg for the 
second access axis. So I'm going to group those. All right. So that's that. Now, uh, now I need to start looking at putting in slots. I need slots for this to interlock into this one. And I need slots for my little egg table to sit on on both this egg and on this egg. And I need to get some feet on this egg that are the right dimensions and, and set where they need to be so that uh, this whole thing will sit without rocking. So this now can be put on the cut path. And I need to look at interlocking these pieces. So I know I've got three millimeters between it here and here because this is a small one. And when I select this whole thing and does, and scale it up from mama, it won't matter if things will get bigger. But this is about as small as you're going to make it and with three millimeters. So I need to have about one and a half inch notch here and here on the inside of this egg and then a one and a half millimeter notch on the outside top and bottom of this one. Okay, so I will draw me a rectangle. Let's put it, uh, we'll put it on a blue tool path. Now this needs to be three millimeters wide. There it is, three millimeters. It needs to be three millimeters in width because that's the thickness of the material I'm working with. And uh, I'm not going to worry about the height right now because, if, if, in fact, if we change the uh, anchor point to the bottom center and we change our height to one and a half millimeters, uh, I didn't unlock the aspect ratio. Go back, unlock one and a half millimeters. That's the actual size of the slot. Now, if I air and let's hold our control button, select the egg and tell it to go to center. There we go, it's now centered up. But if I select just that and bring it down to where it is right on the top of that, if I put the corners of that lined up there and there. I don't get all of the egg. It's not uh, it's not covering the outermost perimeter. So what I'm going to do to make sure I get my one and a half millimeter depth is I'm going to put that corner right there where it needs to be using my control and my arrow movement. Now that I know I've got that there from here to here is one and a half millimeters. So now it doesn't matter about this up here. I can just drag this and make it bigger because that measurement is going to be one and a half millimeters. And I'm going to need this little tool multiple times. So I'm going to control D duplicate it and just bring it over here out the way. And I'm going to now need to create that slot right here. So if I select th that pair, that's a, hold my shift button and select B, that little toolpath. And I'm going to, uh, you can't see the ants are moving right now because it's a toolpath. So I'm going to put that on a cut layer so you can see it better. There you can see the ants. So I'm going to select A, the pair, hold my shift button and select the square. And now subtract, which is right here, A subtract B, and you get that notch on the outer perimeter. Now this one, I'm going to hold my shift button, select the egg, tell it to go align to center again. Now that I've got it on the center axis, I'll just arrow it down until I get it down here to the bottom. And I'm going to do the same thing here. Um, I'm going to leave my aspect ratio unlocked and make my height one and a half millimeters. And doesn't really matter about the anchor point, but there's centered up. Now I'm going to arrow this up. Arrow, you select it, arrow it up. T 
till the corners are right there on the cut line perimeter. That'll work. And now I will select this and draw it down. Now select that, hold my shift button, select the toolpath and subtract it. Now I've got, and I just did that backward guys, not paying attention to what I'm doing, talking and not listening. These need to be on the inside perimeter and see, I know some of y'all will holler at me and, and I'm glad you're paying attention cause I'm not, but that's the beauty of the undo button. We'll just undo that. We get back to that top one there. And I just need to bring it down to here. Do the same thing. All right, let's make the height one and a half millimeters. And I messed that up. 1.5. There we go. And now, and I moved it. Hold my shift button, put it back in the center. Now select it and take it up until the corners are right on the corner. Now here, because we're coming inside, we won't have to change the size of it because the radius, that arc of that egg is going to put it up into that one and a half millimeter square rectangle. So now I can just put my corners on there like that. Hold or select that, uh, the egg, the bunny, hold my shift button, select that and hit the subtract button. There we go. Bring that one down here. Hold my shift button in that egg and align it to center. And now I'm going to bring it down and put it right in there. It needs to be one and a half millimeters high. And because I had my anchor point in the top center, that just brought that square up to where it needs to be. And now I'm just going to, I didn't mean to do that. There we go. Select that and use my control arrow to bring it down very slowly in increments to where I get that lined up with there. And now select the bunny, hold shift, select that and subtract. And now I have my two inner slots for this to slide into. Now this one will need the slots on the outside. So we're going to do th uh, three millimeters wide and one and a half millimeters high. We're going to hold my shift align it to center and then bring it down put it where we had it on the other align the corners so they're on the perimeter and the reason that I I'm dragging this up I'll show you what happens when you don't drag it up to encompass that up there if I select the egg, hold my shift button and select that, and I hit subtract, it'll work. But now I have to ungroup and then select this and delete it. It works, but I just like dragging that up so it makes it a clean cut and done. Uh, always more than one way to accomplish something, guys, gals. Width is three millimeters and one and a half millimeters high. Align it to center. Come on. What's, oh, I got a select tool, stupid. Center. And now this needs to be on the outermost perimeter. So So if I put those corners right there on the perimeter and then just drag that down, now all I have to do is select. Are they not grouped? Hmm. It's 
What did I just do? Hit the wrong button. You gotta group them, stupid. Alright, now, A, subtract B. Done. Alright, so now, that will fit into the bottom right there. Roll in, and that'll pop in to there. And those are ready to interlock. I don't have my alignment for my platform on this egg and because I when I created the offset I just arrowed that over I should be able to just select that and say control D and then put it in the center of this one yep and those are gonna be good now I need feet on this one and I did little bitty eggs for the feet on the side of this. So I'll take this right here and do an offset. Offset inward. And I'm not liking that. It's turning into a teardrop. So we're going to say cancel. We'll just come over here and draw out a perfect circle holding our shift button. And you could put little circles on here if you wanted to. I just thought that was just one more detail on my designs. I thought little eggs down there would look nice. Somebody may never notice that those were eggs in my design, but that's what I did. Um, so what I'm going to do is hold my shift button and select this. Actually, you know what? Yeah, the one I want to move is this one. So hold that. Shift like that and align it to the bottom, and that was those are aligned. And so I can double check that by dragging a toolpath from up here to the bottom of my feet. And sure enough, there it is, it's on the bottom. So now I'll take this, convert it to a shape or a path, get my node editing, grab this top node, and that's a little bit tall, but we're getting ready to rotate this. So that looks about the right shape. I'm gonna rotate it uh, 22 and a half degrees. And now, I'm going to, now that I've got this toolpath down here, and it, I know it's where I want it to be. With that selected, I'm just going to use my, do, uh, yeah, my docking tools, and I'm going to dock it down. And that put it right to that toolpath. They're not quite large enough, so holding my control button, I'm going to draw that out and make it a little bit bigger. Take it up, and now dock it down again. And that's a good overlap. And now what I want to do is I want to make sure that I am centered with these feet. So I'm going to come over here and grab another tool path. Put it there in the center. And for giggles, I've got my, whatever I got. Actually, I'm going to dock this egg right to there. So dock it. It didn't want to go there. Dock. Nope. All right. It's interfering with each other, so I'm just going to arrow it over. Now that I've got it lined up there, I'm going to say Control D, duplicate it, mirror it, mirror, and rotate or move that one over here to where they're touching. They're both on the center. And you could use uh, the arrange tools to get these absolutely butted up against each other. But that right there is going to be satisfactory for what we're doing. Now I'm going to look at my movement again. Where I'm at, 10 millimeters. Okay. So if I just arrow over one time, that's 10 millimeters. Select this one, arrow over one time, it's 10 millimeters. That don't look like it's going to be quite enough. 
So I'm going to say, let's give it five millimeters more. Change my arrow movement to five millimeters. Arrow, there we go, that looks better. And this one here, five millimeters. Now I'll grab both of those, select them both, group them. Now select my egg, my big egg, and weld them. So now those are symmetrical, they're welded into place, and they're the same height as my feet. So that should sit together squarely and not have any rock and roll to the eggs. It shouldn't weeble wobble. If it does weeble wobble, it won't fall down. All right, now I need to set up some notches. Um, I'm going to, uh, I'm, I'm going to have this one set up so that it will be the very back of the egg. This will be where I glue on little Peter Cottontail's cotton ball. And that's the, this will be the notch that I'm going to insert my ledge, my tabletop into first and then roll it down into position. And to do that, to make it easier, I'm going to put a radius on this slot. And I don't need it to be to coming in here any wider than the one and a half millimeters. So let's draw us out a tool. And just so I can see this one a little bit better, I think I'm going to use the pink layer, number seven. And I'm going to draw out, this one needs to be uh, one and a half millimeters in width and three millimeters tall. Now I'm going to put it in the center of this tool path. And now I'm going to arrow it over until the corner, the lower corner is on the outer perimeter or the inner perimeter of that, if you will, right there like that. So now I'm one and a half millimeters in and I'm one and a half millimeters from the outer piece. So that's as strong and as weak as I can make it at the same time. All right. But now what I'm looking at, if I'm going to put my egg, the shelf in here, I want to subtract it first. We're going to uh, select, in fact, I'm going to make a duplicate of that while I've got it. Control D, duplicate it, move it over here. Now, I'm going to uh, take the egg, shift and left click that and subtract. Okay, there's the first notch. But I want to have a radius here. So I'm going to use my ruler, come up here and measure. Now I just want to measure the whole tool path, or the, that I don't want to do that. Temporarily, I'm going to select this tool path and drop it down one movement. Now I can use my ruler, come in here and find out how long is that segment, and it's 0.37 millimeters. Uh, It's not very, very much. It's not very, very much. Um, you know what I'm going to do? I'm actually going to, I'm going to elongate this. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to, I'm going to cancel, say, okay. I'm going to show my nodes, which means I'm going to need to ungroup it, show my nodes. And I'm going to move, or I'm going to take, and I'm going to insert a node right here, right close to the edge. Not on the edge, but right close to it, right here, hitting the letter I. And now with that there, I'm going to come back here to this one. I selected it. It's red if we look at it. And now I'm going to hit the letter D for delete. It's gone. Now I'm going to come up here to my move controls, and I'm going to select my movement to 1.5 millimeters and say okay. Now I'm going to select that node and with my arrow hit it one time and now it's 1.5 millimeters. All right, so that works there. Now I need a radius. I know this is at, at or about 1.5 millimeters. I want to do about three-fourths of that, so 0.75 millimeters. 
I'm going to go to radius tool and say 0.75 and come right up here and click click so not going to let me get it radius not going to let me do the radius uh, is that because of that node placement let's uh, let's look at what that length is node yeah that's only one millimeter from there to there so let's do a 0.5 0.5 will be enough. Point f I can move that node, but I'm not going to do that. We're going to come here and now do that. That'll work. So if you don't understand what just happened there, let's go back and look at it. The distance from this node to this node is 1.5 millimeters. I know because that's what I told it. It's actually going to be a little bit over. 1.51. But when you look up here, the distance from this node to the next node is only 1.03 millimeters. And when you do a radius, a radius size can only be, uh, it can't be any greater than, for the, in fact, I can do a 1.03 radius uh, node, or uh, I can do a 1.03 radius because from here to here is 1.03. And that's as large as that radius can possibly be. If I wanted to make it uh, any larger, uh, then it would have to be, this node would have to be further apart. So let's try that 1.03, or just say one millimeter. We tried 0.75 though, didn't we? One millimeter radius. Yes, there we go. So that jumped from that node to there. So now, That'll make that really easy to insert that in there. We don't have to worry about it popping up so much because we're counting on gravity to hold it in place. If you wanted to, you can put a little glue in there, but now you can easily slide that in, and then as you need to, you rotate it down. You've got room for that to, to rotate nicely. Now I'll take this, and I changed my movement, so I don't know where we're at. I can just line it up, though. There we go. Now that's back where it needs to be. I got a little funky thing going on right there. We're going to clean that up. And that's because I did not have that corner of the... When I had this in here, I had it too far inside. So it left that little protrusion. But we can go into node editing. Select it first. There we go, node editing. And now what I'm going to do is... First, I'm going to put the toolpath back up where it should be. Come on. Ah, it's not letting me select the toolpath. It's too much uh, movement. There we go. Now, node editing, select the red path, cut path, go back to the nodes, and I'm going to, I'll move this node. Actually, you know what? I'll insert a node right here. I for insert. And select that one, hit the D for delete. And I can actually delete that little guy right there. Keep it clean. All right, so now that's cleaned up. That's better. Got to pay more closer attention. I was too far in when I did the subtraction. Now what I can do is take this one, bring it over. In fact, what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring this corner to the outer perimeter. And look, make sure we're just past it, and we are. And actually, no, don't, uh, yeah. Hmm. Cause that's where that needs to be, but these, no, I'm gonna do what I did, same thing on the other side. I'm gonna bring this bottom one out. 
and then I'll move the other node in. Making sure that I am not going to leave any funky stuff. And there is just a little bit there, so I need to get a little bit more precise movement. There. Okay. And I'll say, are these grouped? They are now. A, subtract B. And then I'm going to ungroup them. Go into node editing. Put a node right there in the corner. Select that one, delete that one. Set my movement to one and a half millimeters and it is, say so okay. Go in tight and select just that one. So it's red, it's selected, arrow, that's one and a half millimeters in. So now that's uh, a good ledge for that to sit on. But the problem is this is going to insert here and then rotate down. So if it's gonna rotate down, it can't have this, this will be in the way. So actually, uh, what I should have done is, well undo, what I should have done is, come right here, we're gonna draw a line, hold my shift key, straight line, done. There we go, that's better. Now go to that one, go to node editing, and insert a node where those overlap right there insert and now I can delete that now delete that's better now that can slide in here and rotate down and in and fit right there on top of that that's better that's the way it should look all right so there's that piece there's that piece. Now I need to put the node or the notches on these two, and these two notches need to be identical to this one. So, what I can do is come right here. I've got my rectangle tool. I'm just going to come to this corner, get my crosshairs, and come up and over. And it doesn't matter if it's bigger, as long as it's uh, it doesn't matter how wide it is, but that's to that corner almost. We will convert that to a path, show the nodes, select both of those nodes, and then bring them up right to that corner. There. Now that's identical to that notch. So I can just use that over here twice, control D. And I can actually just grab that and just pull it right there till I get my crosshairs and that's right in place. Same thing over here. It's awful close. Grab it, get my crosshairs there and just pop it right in there till I get crosshairs. Come on, crosshairs. It's not wanting to give me the crosshairs. Alright. There we go. Now what I'm going to do is group both of those. Make sure this is grouped, and it is. And hold my shift key, select the pair, and subtract it. And I thought I went taller. I thought I was high enough. Why well, wasn't that tall enough? Undo. Why did that not work? All right, 
I'm a little bit perplexed because if these are at the exact same height and I duplicated that cut out and it cut all that out in fact I'll start here just to check my rectangles over there I'm gonna get crosshairs here and get crosshairs here Yeah, they're identical. Well, they're not identical. Is that why? Ah, yeah, something. I did something wrong. Oh, that's why. Because I told you a minute ago, it didn't matter about how wide you made it. But if this, if we had a, a point to set that at, yeah, it does matter. Dummy, 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 dummy. All right, delete. Now that I've got that at the actual measurement, uh, I can now put that there at the intersection right there that's what I should have done <sighs> all right bring that over there we go that's better we'll figure it out together group them now a Subtract B. There we go. Those are lined up. Those should cut out and everything fit together. Uh, and you'll have a nice X and Y axis of a, of a silhouette of an egg. Now you need your um, tabletop. You need your tabletop. All right, now to do the tabletop, I'm going to... I can eliminate these guys, but instead of deleting them, I've selected them both. And I'm just going to, uh, in fact, I'll go ahead and group them just in case and just arrow them over here out of the way. And if I ever need, if I need them, I can just bring them back in and center them since I've grouped them and they'll go right back. But I think I'm done with them. But now what I'm going to do to get the size of my circle, how big does that circle need to be? I'm going to go to my ellipse, elliptical tool, my ellipse tool come right here and get crosshairs hold my shift button and drag from there till I come over here and get the matching crosshairs and release and we can put that on a cut path and then select it and there is the size the overall diameter of our tabletop now we just need an inner piece for the hole for the egg to sit in and I think what I found worked best for me was about 42 millimeters for a two and a half inch tall uh, large egg. Now, of course, these these uh, egg dimensions are going to vary if you go with the the jumbo eggs or the small or the you know extra large or the large you know eggs are coming all different dimensions. So you ought to kind of pay this by ear. But I'm going to do another circle holding my shift key and then tell it to do 42 millimeters by 42 millimeters because I didn't have that locked. Oops, what I, not 420. Y'all stay away from that 420 now. All right, there we go. Now hold my shift and that and center it, group it. And there we just designed our first egg piece. I'm done with these tool, pit, tool paths. I'll select that one and delete it. Select that one and delete it. And yes, I am done with those, so delete. I say we're done with it, but I haven't tested it. I haven't cut it. I haven't designed it. And what I would recommend doing, if you're doing a design like this, instead of designing it all the way to, to finish, do what I did here. I cut the fur, and, and I, you notice I didn't even engrave it because that would be a waste of time because this was for no other purpose than to see if I had the fitment right for these and that the placement of the feet were going to work to keep it from being cattywampus. Uh, so, and if you're designing, 
and uh, you something you're going to be uh, wanting to make for yourself to, and or for something you're going to be selling, you want it to be right. So don't spend uh, ever how long we've been designing this entire thing and then go to, to cut it out for the first time once it's complete only to find that, oh man, that none of that works and now I'm going to have to need to go back and need to, and you have to start refiguring three or four things. These were the first two pieces. Let's see if they work. Cut them out. Put them together. Slide it into place. And snap done that worked and that sits nice and level everything about that worked i'm like great now moving on to the next piece this was the next piece i did the tabletop and still no well actually i did do the engraving on that one because i wanted to start to see what it was going to look like and that was really kind of a waste of time because tabletop didn't work did not have the placement right it was sitting too low so but once I did that, I was able to place my egg and see, well, okay, well, that's not going to work. I need to do what? And that needs to come up. Went back in and all I had to do was refigure the position of those four little notches that the egg, that the, the platform's going to sit in. Then cut out the next one. And that was actually this one. So I didn't waste a lot of material in prototyping because I was making the small one anyway. So that's how I made Peter Cottontail. Hopefully you found some really good tips in this. You learned a few things. You found it informative. And you see the process that I go through whenever I'm putting together a design. Uh, I don't just throw it on the laser or the light burn and, and throw it out there and sell it to you. I test it, and test it, build it, and test it. I fail and I fail until I get it right. And then I share it with those that are interested on HoboWithWood.com. You've just watched a video that shows you the steps that I went through on how to do that. It's not difficult, but there is some time involved and some trial and error. And if you want to go make your own, or go for it. Uh, but that file is available on HoboWithWood.com for little Peter Cottontail, a little uh, the small individual bunny, which actually the individual one is the little girl bunny. And then I've got the big mama bunny available by itself. And then I've got the family, the little boy and the little girl. The only way the little boy is available is in the, in the family. Uh, guys, I appreciate you hanging around and watching. I do hope you enjoyed it. I, I do enjoy doing these or else I wouldn't be doing it, obviously. Uh, but a big shout out to the patrons. The patrons are the one that make this channel happen. They are the ones that are responsible for keeping Hobo with Wood growing and going. Uh, I, I'm no longer uh, soliciting uh, and asking for super thanks. They're always welcome, but you won't see any banners running about, you know, donate, please donate. Uh, I will ask you at the end of each of the videos that if you do enjoy the content and you would like to see these files for free, Consider becoming a gold patron on patreon.com slash hobo with wood. The gold level patron is the best deal out there. Uh, as of January of this year, I'm putting out one or two files a week that are selling for anywhere from you know $4 and up to $11, $12, $13 a piece for the files. And the gold patrons are getting them for free. Well, maybe there's those files are not something you'd be interested in. So you consider maybe the silver or the bronze. Uh, and then you just get a discount off the files that you would want. And, and maybe that works better for you. But consider becoming a, a patron. It would be greatly appreciated. I am Steve, Hobo with Wood, and I will see you in the next video.